Season three of The Wheel of Time is about to start filming, and we've got a set being built that is very significant. We've also got a major casting that's been revealed, a deleted scene from season one that I think should not have been cut, and some big community news on the way. Now, it's been a minute, but we've got a ton of Wheel of Time news to cover today, so let's get into it. So what happens when you get overloaded with a bunch of stuff in life and you run out of time to make YouTube videos in your spare time? Well, this video happens. There has been literally a ton of news going on over the last month about the Wheel of Time that's worth mentioning, and my goal today is to get all of you caught up on all of that stuff. Now, before we do that, first take a moment and smash the like button on the video. That is one of the best ways that you can help my videos reach more people. That, and of course share them with every single person that you know, and physically force them to watch them all the way through to the very end, including all the ads. It's probably easier though just to like it, so go ahead and do that. Anyways, as always, you can see the spoiler level on each topic right here. So let's go ahead and dive in. So let's lead off with something that was released by the show Twitter account about two weeks ago now that I actually have had in my possession now for about nine months. Last week, the show released a deleted scene from season one of the show, which I'm going to show you here in a moment. Last year, as part of the inaugural WatCon, we were given a couple clips by Rafe Judkins and told not to show them publicly outside of the convention until the show released them. Well, one of those clips was released publicly months ago, but weirdly, this particular clip was not released, and therefore, I couldn't really show it or share about it. Well, that all changes now. So, I'm gonna go ahead and play the clip from season one, episode one. That was cut, and we'll discuss it afterwards. Too early for breakfast? Never too early for your mom's bread. <laughs> he left before I woke. She loved you, you know, my wife. Do you remember her at all? I remember her eyes. So blue, just like Rand's. Her hair was red like his. When your mom and dad were rebuilding the inn after the fire, they sent you up mountain to stay the summer with us. And she'd spend all day with you, playing with you, holding you, as if you were her very own daughter. You must miss her so much. I do. Of course I do. But there's something about death that's clean, final. And a clean cut, even if it's three times as deep, will always heal better than something ragged. Something messy and raw. You have his heart in your hand, girl. Be gentle with it. Is all I have. So my first reaction back when I saw this almost a year ago was, why in the world did they cut this? This is the type of character building and depth that I think was missing from the first episode. I, I really can't help but put this at the feet of Amazon. I know Rafe and the writing team had ideas for a much longer first episode. Yes, this exact set of dialogue is not in the books but it does set up that Rand is different from the rest of the Emmons fielders. It hints at the undercurrents between Rand and Egwene's relationship at the beginning of the books. I guess the other reason I wish that this hadn't been cut was that I love Michael Micklehatton, and it's a shame that we did not get more of him in season one. So what did you think of the deleted scene? Should they have cut it? Should they have left it in? Let me know in the comments of the video. Next up, we have a couple big things on Wheel of Time season two and some season three things to discuss, including the casting of one of the major characters but before we get to that, let's talk about the sponsor for this video, Quirinzio. This is a brand that I am very, very happy to work with. With all the things going on in the world right now, as it goes with LGBTQ plus rights, and being a member of that community myself, it's extremely important that you show your support, whether you're a part of that community or not. Quirinzio is a clothing brand that works with multiple LGBTQ plus organizations and charities to support awareness of issues and support those that need it. With Pride Season right around around the corner, it's a good time to get some gear 
and of course support those organizations. This shirt came right from the website and all you have to do to get something just like it is click the link in the description of this video and make sure to enter the coupon code NABLESS and you'll get 10% off your entire order. It's all high quality stuff and like I said, I personally know the owner and I highly recommend this organization. But let's get back to the news. So let's first start with the season two news. Way back in May of 2022, many of those who follow the show noticed actress Rima Tewiata, I hope I said that right, in the season two rap video released by Amazon. We were never given a specific role for her character, and at the time, many speculated, including myself, that she would be Varen. Well, we now have confirmation coming from Watseries.com that Rima Tewiata, again, apologies if I butchered that, will be playing the role of Shiriam Bayanar in season two. Now, of course, Shiriam is the mistress of novices. According to Watseries.com, it appears she was in Prague for filming in August and in December of 2021. Being in town for both of those dates implies that she will very likely be in multiple episodes of the season. And given the role of Shiriam, she will likely play a recurring character throughout the rest of the series. In terms of Rima Te Wiata, I haven't seen her in anything, so I really can't speak to anything about her acting ability or how she's going to do in the role. But I will say that I tend to have trust in the showrunners when it comes to casting. I have my share of complaints about season one of the show, but the casting wasn't one of them. By and large, they did an excellent job. And I have no reason to think that she won't do well in the role. If they chose her, it was probably for a good reason. So casting Shiriam would make sense for season two, as they're adding quite a bit of the White Tower in season two, including, of course, the Mistress of Novices. So that should be a given. The question will be is if they take Shiriam's arc all the way to its conclusion. I'll avoid spoilers here, but this is probably going to be a constant thing that we have to discuss with the adaptation, as it's going to really be impossible for them to give every single character from the books their full arc in the show. I'm curious what's going to happen here with her. Now, what might be a more important question, though, especially for many in the fandom, is are they going to cast Varen? And at this point, given that we don't have a casting and don't have an idea if there's an actress picked out for her yet, that could be a good question. I will admit, if they don't add Varen to the storyline of season two, that seems a bit odd to me, given her importance to not only that story, the importance of introducing her early for a payoff later. But all of that being said, I actually think that Mira Sial has been cast for Varen in season two. We know that Mira Sial's in the show. We don't know that that's who she's playing, but that's what I think. I have no reason to say so. I just think it makes sense and I like the look of it. What do you all think about the Shiriam casting? And do you think that we are getting Varen in season two as well? Let me know. So let's move on to some season three news. I last mentioned that season three was getting ready for filming and that they were using season three to adapt the Shadow Rising. Well, we have some more news and it not only backs that up, but it also gives us an idea specifically which parts of the Shadow Rising we're going to see. Wattseries.com has an article up showing pictures of the newly rebuilt Emmonsfield set. I shouldn't say newly rebuilt, they're still building it, but they are constructing the Emmonsfield set again with a new inn. The previous set was burnt down and destroyed after the season one episode as a result of the Trolloc attack. And the fact that it's being completely rebuilt indicates that we should see the Battle of the Two Rivers in season three. That would lead me to expect to see Perrin's entire storyline be a focus for the season. And hopefully that means the return of Pot on Fane and the introduction of Slayer. Now it's my favorite book in the series. So I'm very, very excited to see what they do with the Shadow Rising adapted on the screen. What are your thoughts on the Emmons Field set being rebuilt. Let me know in the comments of the video. Now, of course, this is not really news, but it's something worth pointing out. If you are number one, a fan of the Wheel of Time and want to see some of the new cast acting in a moderately mainstream format. But number two, if you are a fan of terrible movies, if both of those things are true, go check out Cocaine Bear. Ayula Smart, the actress set to play Avienda, has a role in the movie Cocaine Bear. She doesn't have a massive role in the movie, but it's definitely not small. And she's pleasant, even though the movie's terrible. And if you like terrible movies, go check it out. You can see Iola's Smart. All right, so we've got some community news and it's some my favorite community news. One of my favorite events of the entire year is coming up. And I do not say that lightly. I have no dog in this fight, but it is seriously one of the most entertaining Wheel of Time things that happens every single year. And that of course is Watt Idol. It's a community event that's run by John from What Up, the crew over at the Dusty Wheel, and of course, Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern. It features some amazing Wheel of Time themed covers and rewrites rights of famous songs, all done by fans in sort of a American Idol type format. Now, if you haven't seen it before, head to whatidol.com and check out the past year's entries. Seriously, if you haven't seen these before, your mind will be blown. There are some amazing ones. The winner last year is legitimately at like 
almost brings a tear to my eye. It's basically the Wheel of Time fandom anthem, in my opinion. Absolutely incredible. Go check it out. This year, entries will be accepted up until April 8th, so you only have about another week. Check out whatidol.com and get more information. So, what do you think of the news? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure also to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. You also need to hit that bell icon too. It is the only way that YouTube is going to tell you when my videos come out. They don't do that just for a subscription. Also, huge thank you to my patrons. You all rock. I could not do this without you. For you to become a patron and support what I do here on the channel, click the link in the description of the video. And of course, check out one of these videos right here that you might like if you like this one. Until next time, peace out.